Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Sketch Practice with Angela Henderson. So great to be able to talk to you guys today. Um, now, don't get intimidated by this layout. It's not super complex. And for those who are super experienced, don't laugh because I said intimidated because we know you know everything. This is... Um, uh, recording today to teach you a little bit about the use of the block tool and I use the block tool a lot in kitchens and so that's why I have a little kitchen set up here um, this kitchen if you want to know how to do this layout not that it's a great one but if you want to know how to do a similar layout where we have the cabinets and everything kind of laid in and I'll show you what that looks like really fast um, cabinets windows and everything um, Look at the tutorial that I've already uploaded um, called Use of the Sketch and Block Tool. And that's where I go through how to create this particular layout. I added a few things here. I added a kitchen island. I've moved my label um, for the kitchen. And I added a table to represent what's actually present in the home at the time of our inspection. And I want to show you why I did those things. So when you have a, um, when you're writing an estimate, sometimes you're gonna to need to remove um, elements of the room in order to correctly represent the amount of available floor space. So usually you have a kitchen table or something, even when you have an eating kitchen, they'll have a little table somewhere in the room just kind of to balance the room out. I represented that using the area tool and you can tell that it's an area because it has little a um, here symbol and these are all using the block tool these cabinets are laid in and the reason why I'm using the block tool for those areas versus this is because these are all um, mounted or uh, in some way um, non movable items that are attached to the dwelling to the residents and so with the block tool you have the ability to go in and manipulate how the area is treated that's represented by this space. So for example, um, when you go in here, you see that the block tool has all kinds of uh, references that you can use, but here the behavior is what I wanna to talk to you about. And you see you can remove the square footing. Um, we don't have to remove the ceiling, linear feet. We're not gonna remove any square feet behind because it's not attached to a wall, but we are gonna to wanna to remove the square feet beneath because um, let's say we have some flooring damage here and we wanna be able to represent the accurate uh, measurements for the flooring. We don't wanna include the space where there's actually an island because typically that island um, breaks up the floor. Now. You can check when you're on site or you can check when you talk with the um, homeowner whether or not the flooring runs underneath the island. It's going to look like it in a lot of cases, especially to new adjusters, but you can um, verify this with the homeowner or you can verify by checking and looking at the base and seeing if there's flooring underneath this island. Usually it's not, but um, out here in California, there's a lot of times where the island is laid directly on top of the flooring, especially if it's wood flooring and they've done a recent remodel, they want that flooring continuous. So if the flooring is continuous, you're not gonna remove the island because any damages to the floor requiring replacement are going to affect um, the flooring underneath this island as well. You're not gonna replace up to the island and leave the damaged flooring underneath of it. So um, just to give you some reference points for why we might wanna use that tool. And the same thing with the cabinets. Um, let's say the... Um, we're gonna to have to paint and there's no paint behind the cabinets. So we're gonna to wanna to go into these little areas and remove anything that applies. So again, we're not gonna remove the ceiling because these cabinets aren't touching the ceiling. The standard height for floor, uh, ceiling to floor is, um, floor to ceiling, I guess, is eight feet. And so we only have seven and a half feet represented here. So these cabinets are not touching the ceiling, but they do have some square footage um, behind the cabinets. So we are gonna wanna remove the square footage from behind the cabinets because 
there's no paint back there. So why would we have our estimate representing that there is paint on the wall surface behind this cabinet? Now, again, if you check at the site and you find that there's actually paint behind there, you can see it. You want to photograph it for your estimate so you can submit that information. And then you'll leave this here saying, no, we're going to leave that square footage behind. But that is the purpose of using the block tool versus the area tool, because as you can see here, the area tool doesn't have the same behavior options. You can only just do a few things with the behaviors for area. And so the area is going to represent things that might be present in the home that take up space, but they're not necessarily mounted or in any way physically permanently attached to the dwelling. And for that reason, the area tool is the better way to represent a table that you can move around where you might have just some things set on the table versus a kitchen island you're not going to be moving around at any given point so i hope this was helpful to you guys i can't wait to talk to you again thanks for watching